better? Yeah. Welcome to this last session this afternoon, the left main session. And uh, we have a very packed program, a very interesting program. And like uh, uh, every big event, we have a firework in the end. So there's a lot of things to do, but I would please ask you to keep basically on time because the schedule is a bit tight. And uh, I'm here, I'm Jens Lassen, I'm here with a very distinguished panel, and we're looking very much forward to discuss the uh, left main with all of you. I will start to invite uh, uh, Professor Kitani to the stage to give a speech on the DCA, DCB registry, please. So that's right. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm Shun Kitani from uh, Japan. Today, I'd like to talk about combined direct from coronary atherectomy and drug coating baronangioplasty for coronary bifurcation regions. The optimal strategy for bifurcation regions still remains controversial even in this meeting. Uh, the uh, DCA was past used at debulking device, and it was revived in Japan uh, a few years ago. And, and 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, uh, past DCA study demonstrated DCA alone had a high risk rate and uh, TL work rate due to excessive internal hyperplasia after DCA. Whereas uh, combined DCA and DES for bifurcation regions uh, reduce risk rates and could avoid complex stenting. Uh, the distal part of DCA uh, is uh, consisted. Uh, uh, of uh, nose cone and cutting, house, uh, cutting window and flat type balloon. Uh, we uh, rotated the DCA cassette uh, so that the uh, cutting window faces the uh, target plug and by, and by uh, balloon direction, the cutting window is attached to the target plug and uh, the plug is uh, de developed by uh, advancing the cutter uh, forward. And the developed plug is uh, <coughs> Uh, stored in nose cone, and we can remove the plug uh, outside the body. And this run shows the concept of combined DCA and DCB. If the plug uh, is retrieved by DCA sufficiently, we can reduce the risk of dissection and elastic recoil, and we, we can also uh, prevent carina shift. And the DCB itself prevents carina shift compared with stent, and DCB suppress uh, intimal hyperplasia. So uh, we hypothesized the region preparation by DCA before DCB angioplasty was an uh, optimal stentless PCI strategy for coronary bifurcation regions. So the aim of this study was to evaluate the efficacy and the safety of DCA DCB for bifurcation regions. Uh, this retrospective study was conducted in Japanese 16 centers. Inclusion criteria were IBAS guided DCA and DCB angioplasty for bifurcation regions without severe dissection of the DCA, and all patients were performed follow up angiogram. Uh, exclusion criteria as follows uh, uh, unsuitable regions for DCA procedure, uh, such as severe calcium and uh, bending region are uh, excluded. Primary endpoint of this study was TVF at 12 months, and secondary endpoints were procedure-related major complications, major cardiovascular events, uh, target region restenosis, TLR, and TVR at 12 months. A total of 9,732 patients were screened in this study. Uh, the, uh, in 227 patients of planned DCA-DCB, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, these patients were uh, uh, of 10 cases converted to DCADES. This was because uh, nine cases were uh, due to this insufficient debulking by DCA uh, due to severe calcium. And only in one case uh, occurred uh, severe dissection after DCA, so bailout stenting was necessary. So finally, we enrolled 129 patients in this study. And this is patient characteristics. Uh, Mean age was 65 years old, and prior stenting history was included 43%. The target region were mainly located around LMT verifications, 82%, uh, 
And this is because LMT bifurcation is a good candidate for DCA procedure. And the reference di vessel diameter was 3.5 millimeter. And uh, true bifurcation regions were 22 patients and 70 percent. Uh, most of cases were performed by transfemoral approach, and uh, DCA for main target vessel alone was uh, 95 percent. And the DCA for both main target vessel and side branch were six cases. Uh, only 5%. DCB diameter for uh, main target vessel was uh, 3.52 millimeters, and uh, DCB for side branch were performed in four, uh, five cases. Uh, there were procedural related major cardiovascular events, and there were also uh, no side branch flow disturbance in, uh, during PGI. In QC analysis, uh, acute gain was 1.84 millimeters. And in terms of MLD and patient DS, there were no significant difference between post DCA and at follow up angiogram. This was uh, probably due to the uh, effect of DC bank plasty, which inhibits the excessive intimal hyperplasia of the DCA. As a result, red lumen loss was 0 0.29 millimeters. And this table shows the QCO analysis compared with previous representative DCA study, Abacus. In this study, uh, <laughs> the ratio of percent plaque area was 56 percent, relatively high compared with uh, that of Abacus study of 45 percent. According to the Abacus study, even the uh, DCA was performed uh, aggressively, and that the uh, resistance rate was about 20 percent, and the TLR rate was 50 percent at six months. But our study uh, showed a good clinical outcomes at 12 months. Uh, TVF was 10.9%, uh, and Ristenos rate was 2.3%, uh, only three cases. And TLR occurred four cases, 3.1%, and three of them were um, uh, target region Ristenosis case, and uh, only one case occurred, uh, side of branch osteo disease progress with TLR, 0.8%. Uh, these results were acceptable uh, results uh, as a stentless PCI uh, for uh, large vessel bifurcation, including LMT. Finally, I'll show the representative case of DCA, DCB. We usually consider a provisional stent strategy or a two stent strategy uh, for uh, type, this type of the LMT through bifurcation region. But we performed uh, both. Uh, we performed DCA for both LAD and LCX like this, and uh, post DCA angiography revealed lumen enlargement like this. In Ivas image, uh, yellow arrows showed the uh, developed plaque area, and the regular percent plaque area of the DCA was 54 percent in LAD ostium and 71 percent in LCX. Then we performed DCB for uh, both LAD and then LCX. And this is final angiogram. We successfully revascularized LMT through bifurcation regions without stent. And 11 months follow up CAG also revealed excellent result like this. Of course, there were uh, several limitations of this study. Uh, because this study was a retrospective study in nature, and uh, we selected uh, the case without severe dissection of the DCA and suitable region for DCA without severe calcium or bending. And sample size was small to determine the end point of DCA procedure and optimal DCB size. And the, one of the problem of DCA procedure is uh, technically uh, and complex itself. So the end point of this procedure was operator's discretion and experience. And my conclusions are uh, DCA, DCB for uh, bifurcation regions provide good clinical outcomes, minimizing side branch damage. And we believe uh, DCA, DCB can be one of the good options as a stentless PCI strategy for bifurcation regions, especially LMT. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Do we have some comments from the yeah. panel? Yeah. Uh, what was the impact of calcium in your in your patients? You did uh, a therapy whether the patient calcium uh, 
uh, whether it was a small part of calcium or it was extensive. Uh, and uh, what is the percentage of pe uh, people who had the dissection? Uh, then you, you excluded them or you just, or what did you do? Uh, dissection, uh, right? After yeah, the, the dissection after atherectomy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, you, need, you had only balloon, then you exclude uh, them or? Uh, the, uh, about 0.8%. Uh, uh, in uh, four, uh, 220, uh, seven patients were DCA, DCB, performed DCA, DCB, and only one case occurred a severe dissection after DCA. So uh, it, it is uh, feasible, uh, I think. Is it preferable with calcium if there is calcium? Uh, you, how, how, how many patients they had extensive calcification in their uh, plaque? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we, we didn't evaluate the uh, 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 distribution of uh, calcium at uh, 800, uh, 800, uh, 180 degrees and so on. Uh, Sorry, a brief comment. Uh, obviously, great presentation. How long did you inflate the drug coated, bal drug eluting balloon in the left main stem? There was some concern yesterday. Uh, that if you inflate it for recommended uh, 45 this, uh, seconds. In this study, uh, mean direction time uh, of the ECB was uh, about 50 uh, seconds. No hemodynamic problems in inflating in left uh, stem? Not so long. Yeah. So uh, really interesting to see this. Uh, I didn't see in your baseline characters how frequently did you do the osteo circumflex because that's one of the reasons where locations where we have most issues with our balloons, even the rotor. So uh, can you uh, explain, is it more helpful for your left main LED strategy or you, you have also very good uh, effect for yourself in the circumflex osteo? LCX osteo is a Problem uh, of uh, this uh, procedure, uh, but because uh, DCA uh, is uh, the LCX is uh, angulated, uh, so the uh, uh, guide wire is support wire, and the DCA is a rigid device. So the, uh, the LCX system is uh, uh, easy to cut uh, deeply. So we uh, we must kill the uh, LCX feature, but. Uh, 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 even the, uh, we performed only the uh, DCA for uh, LMT to LED, uh, but uh, the, uh, we can suppress the current shift, so the, uh, the effect of the uh, LCX to the, uh, is minimized, uh, I think. So anyway, I'm not involved in this study, actually, but uh, I'm one of the you know, Japanese experience of data. Uh, we have a 20 years history. And the previous one, maybe you know that. But the new one, it's a little bit, uh, you know, improved. Uh, even as some calcified region, we can cut. But of course, we have a limitation. And uh, like you said, circle social, left main to LED, no question, maybe better stem. But the only circle social, we have a possibility to, you know, reduce the usage of the stem. Cut very usefully. And of course, we need to check the IVAS to fully, you know, remove the plaque and then reduce the maybe, I think, less than 40% plaque. We can do the DCB. This is the uh, one direction of the, uh, the Japanese idea. Yeah, let's go for the second presentation. Thank you very much. I think it's really good for the debates. And we will ask uh, Dr. Uk. Uh, Okutsu to present. It's about the coronary CT guided left main bifurcation PCI. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my presentation is uh, uh, title is uh, coronary CT guided left main bifurcation PCI. Uh, I, uh, today, I would like to introduce the calcium importance for the result of the left main stenting. And this is my disclosure. The current consensus of the left main, the current, this one? He should use, he should use the other one. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Start here? Yes. Okay. 
The current consensus of left main bifurcation PCI recommends the single stent strategy. However, circumflex ostium has sometimes severe stenosis or the occlusion after stenting. Now, there are some factors, uh, for example, the main branch and the side branch plaque and the low angle of the circumflex and the vessel diameter and the calcification is also one of them. The, however, the, every calcium is not the same. The result after stenting might be different according to the calcium size. So, the, uh, how to measure the calcification is a problem. The, we have a three modality to check the cal uh, coronary calcium. The one is uh, IBUS. IBUS can detect the calcification, however, cannot measure the calcium thickness. The OCT can measure the calcium thickness, but not in all cases. The CT can detect the whole body of the calcification. However, the, uh, because of the blooming artifact, the, so the calcium measurement is considered to be impossible. The, uh, in Agassiz score, the over 130 Hansfield unit is uh, uh, defined as a uh, calcification. However, actually, the uh, Calcification CT density have wide range, and the uh, CCT guideline uh, did not uh, describe the, uh, how to measure the calcification in CT image. Not in, uh, not in all cases, however, but the calcification thickness was measured by OCT. And in, in comparing the OCT and the IBUS image in the uh, same, pre, uh, same point, and the uh, calcium image in CT is thicker than the actual calcium because of the uh, blooming artifact of the calcium. So this is a, a reason uh, to be the impossible to measure the calcification in CT. However, we try to make algorithm the, uh, of the calcium thickness estimation. We find out the uh, good good correlation between the uh, peak CT density and the uh, uh, borderline CT density of the coronary calcium. And then the, we uh, devised the estimated calcium border density formula as below. And uh, by using this formula, we can know the calcium thickness in, from the uh, CT image. By using this algorithm, we investigated the uh, relationship between the calcium thickness at left main bifurcation and circumflex ostium deterioration after the left main to LAD crossover single stenting. In 379 patients with the PCI for left main disease, the, uh, unfortunately, 243 patients did not receive the CT examination before the PCI, so they excluded. There are uh, any, in, in any other uh, factor, the uh, non bifurcation stenting and the uh, uh, circumflex ostium severe stenosis and the uh, uh, plan to stent procedure or the left main to circumflex stenting and the DC without stent. And such a uh, patient was uh, were excluded. And finally, 68 patients with coronary CT and uh, left main bifurcation crossover stenting to LAD were enrolled for this analysis. The circum uh, jail circumference ostium stenosis was evaluated by the uh, angiogram visually. Now, more than the 50% of stenosis was uh, defined, the stenosis deterioration of the circumflex ostium after stenting. The calcium was measured, this two point, and the uh, distal left main and the ostial LAD. And uh, uh, we used the cross-sectional view, and uh, we check the estimated calcium thickness and uh, by using the uh, previous algorithm, and the uh, vessel diameter is also. And then the uh, percent, di percent calcium thickness uh, ratio was defined, uh, estimated calcium thickness divided the vessel diameter. This is the patient characteristics. And 9% uh, patient had the CKD, and 3% uh, patient received the hemodialysis. The 
mainly the uh, 46 percent patient had the uh, 101 region location, and the uh, 84 percent patient had the uh, circumflex ostium stenosis of the 25 percent or less before the PCI. The after PCI, the uh, pa the severe stenosis of the circumflex ostium deterioration was observed in a 20% patient. This, these are the uh, user stent. And the rotavator or the uh, orbital arterectomy system was used 15%. And the kissing barrel inflation was performed the 62% uh, patient. The pot was uh, Pot is uh, uh, performed in the uh, uh, almost case. The, as a final dilatation procedure, the kissing balloon inflation and final part was performed, the 49%. Uh, and the next is a uh, uh, pot alone the, in the uh, uh, 34%. As a result, the, in a distal left main position, the circumflex deterioration group have a uh, little bit uh, sick classification, but not significant. In an uh, Austral uh, LAD, the circumflex deterioration group have a significant sick classification. And the percent calcium sickness is similar. In the uh, uh, distal left domain point, the circumflex deterioration group had a uh, high rate of the percent uh, calcium sickness. On the other hand, in, uh, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, not significant. On the other hand, the, in Austral LAD, the C circumflex deterioration group have had a uh, significant high rate, uh, high rate of the uh, percent calcium sickness. In ROC cup, the, uh, these two uh, parameters, uh, es an estimated calcium sickness and uh, percent calcium sickness, this uh, two point is a good parameter. And uh, uh, this uh, 0 0.6 millimeter and uh, uh, 24 percent, these two score may be the uh, cutoff line to predict of the circumflex ostium deterioration after stenting. In the conclusion, the calcium C, uh, coronary CT might be able to measure the calcium sickness. The calcium sickness of the ostial LAD might affect circumflex ostium stenosis deterioration after crossover stenting from left main to LAD. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Thank you very much for a very nice presentation. We have time for a very quick question, but not a big debate. So do anyone have a com comment or a question? Please raise it. Yeah. So this could be an indication for debulking calcium before. Have you done there? I mean, uh, this patient should go for rotaplater directly, and this will modify something in uh, after crossover stenting. Yes. Uh, uh, before the cross, uh, before the stenting, we have to make uh, uh, much effort the, uh, to reduce the calcification if. You, uh, if we find out the six calcification at the bifurcation point. But actually, the OCT and uh, uh, IBAS is uh, something difficult to evaluate the calcium sickness, but the CT can, be, uh, can evaluate the, uh, by using the, uh, our algorithm. So the, this is, the CT is uh, maybe useful for, uh, before the uh, left domain PCI. Thank you. And I will now like to invite uh, Dr. Song to the podium to give a presentation of the different uh, prognostic impact of treatment strategy in left main and non-left main bifurcation. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me in this wonderful meeting. Uh, Uh, today, I'd like to talk about differential prognostic impact of treatment strategy according to regional location, lessons from the COVID registry. Uh, as you know, the COVID registries were multi-center retrospective reward registry of drug eluminous stenting in coronary bifurcation regions in Korea. So far, COVID-1 and 2 registry have contributed much to answering questions regarding bifurcation treatment. 
But these registries were limited by a small number of second generation drug delivery stands. So we started uh, COVID-3 registries. Uh, the design and inclusion criteria were the similar as uh, the COVID-3 registry. Uh, this figure shows the trend of stand technique over time. So that, um, in non-left main bifurcation regions, the proportion of one stent and two stent uh, technique have uh, uh, remained largely unchanged over time. Uh, these days, the two stent technique was used in uh, under 20% of patients. In contrast, in left main bifurcation regions, the proportion of two stent technique uh, has been decreasing over time. So, these days, the two-stand technique was used uh, less than 30% of uh, left main bifurcation lesions. Uh, previously, we compared one-stand strategy with two-stand strategy in left main and non-left main bifurcation lesions using COVID-2 registry. And as you can see here, the two-stand technique was associated with higher risk of target lesion failure in both non-left main bifurcation and left main bifurcation. Uh, th this outcome difference were more prominent in left main bifurcation lesions with a significant interaction. Uh, in the risk of cardiac death or MI was uh, similar between the treatment strategy in non-left main bifurcation. However, in left main bifurcation lesions, two stent strategies significantly increased the risk of cardiac death or MI. So, at the time, we conclude that. One stent strategy should be considered first, especially in left main bifurcation regions. However, this result should be interpreted with caution because, as I mentioned earlier, the COVID-2 registry are included a limited number of second-generation drug eluding stents. So, we uh, using uh, COVID-3 registry. We uh, comp we evaluate we sought to evaluate the prognostic impact of treatment strategy on clinical outcome according to region location. A total of 2,648 patients were enrolled. Among them, uh, about one third of patients had left main bifurcation lesions, and the remaining two thirds of patients had non-left main bifurcation lesions. And two stent strategy was used uh, about one quarter of patients in left main bifurcation lesions. In contrast, the it, only 11% of patients received a two-stent strategy in non-left main bifurcation lesions. Uh, primary endpoint was target lesion failure, which was defined as a composite of cardiac death, MI, and TRR. Uh, among the left main bifurcation group, the uh, patients treated with two-stent strategy uh, were more likely to be older and less likely to be uh, the hyperlipidemia. And other baseline clinical characteristics were similar in both strategy. Uh, the nearly 40% of patients had diabetes, and nearly 20% of it uh, had a previous PCI, and nearly 60% of patients presented with acute coronary syndrome. Among the non-left main bioviction group, the patient treated with uh, two-stand strategy had uh, more diabetes and more dyslipidemia. Others in, are similar in both groups. In contrast to baseline clinical characteristics, the region and procedural characteristics are quite different between the two, uh, two uh, treatment strategy. Among the left main bifurcation group, the patient treated with two-stent strategy had more multivessel disease, more true bifurcation lesion, and more final kissing balloon, more repot, and more use of non-compliant balloons. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, the IVUS guidance was performed in nearly 70% of patients. Among, non, among the non-left main bifurcation group, the patient treated with a uh, two-stand strategy had a more arrayed diagonal bifurcation and the more true bifurcation and more IVUS guidance, more final kissing burning, more repot, and more use of non compliant balloon. Uh, this figure shows the uh, type of two stent strategy used in COVID 3 registries. Uh, the crush technique was the most frequently used technique, uh, followed by T stenting or tap technique, and kissing or V stenting, and cure technique. Uh, let me show the results. 
Uh, patients with uh, left main bifurcation lesion showed a significantly higher rate of target lesion failure, cardiac death or MI, and target lesion revascularization compared to those with non-left main bifurcation lesions. In left main bifurcation lesions, the two-stent strategy was a significantly higher rate of target lesion failure, which was mainly driven by higher re rate of target lesion revascularization. In contrast to COVID-2 registry, uh, the risk of cardiac death or MI was uh, similar in both uh, uh, treatment strategy. In non-left main bifurcation lesions, the, there was no significant difference uh, between the two, uh, two, two treatment strategy in terms of tiger lesion failure and cardiac death or MI and tiger lesion revascularization. This is also different from the COVID-2 registry. Uh, there was a significant interaction between treatment strategy and biopsion location uh, for adjusted risk of tiger lesion failure and tiger lesion revascularization. However, there's no significant interactions uh, for adjusted risk of heart end point. When comparing clinical outcomes between COVID-2 and 3 registry, uh, as you can see here, the cumulative incidence of tiger lesion failure at five years was significantly reduced from 12.6% to 8.4%, despite uh, COVID-3 registry included more left main bifurcation lesions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, patients treated with PCI for a left main bifurcation lesion had poorer outcomes than those with non-left main bifurcation lesion in the era of second generation drug delivery stance. In the treatment of left main bifurcation, Two stent strategy was associated with a higher risk of tiger lesion failure, uh, which was mainly driven by higher risk of tiger lesion revascularization. However, the instance of cardiac death or MI was not different between two strategy. This finding was unlike previous results from the COVID-2 re registry. In the treatment of non-left bifurcation, there were no significant difference in terms of tiger lesion failure, cardiac death or MI, and tiger lesion revascularization between the two treatment strategy groups. Thank you for your attention. Any question? From the, any comments from the audience? Yes. Uh, strategy on left main, uh, there is a big difference on the side branch length lesion because I think the most important characteristic anatomic is the length of side branch lesion. If you have more than 15 millimeter stenosis on the circ, this make all con consequent, I guess. Definitely, I agree with your opinion. And actually, further detailed analysis are on the way by other groups. So, but uh, yeah, you can, uh, we can Im uh, easily imagine that the two stent strategy was used in more complex vision. So, but there's no difference in terms of hard end point. Why that uh, low rate uh, rate um, of PAT in this study? I have seen it was 25% of cases have receiving PAT, proximal optimization. Yeah, actually the, the study period, uh, the 2010 and 2014, so at that time, the, actually the concept of PAT is not uh, popular in Korea, so, so yeah. So it's just... Yeah. Do you think that this can affect the outcome? I actually, the, uh, the, for the detailed analysis on, on the way uh, by other groups, but as far as I'm concerned, actually there's no effect of part on clinical outcome. Okay. okay. No, we, we, we tend to think about that we are now up for second generation DES, so the difference is in the DES. Uh, I think your question is more related to are we improving our technique? So if we do a two-stand technique, uh, you talk about pods, you can also again discuss about the DK crush. Uh, we know better how to do a two-stand uh, technique. So it would be 
lovely if we could identify that even more using your database and the change in the technique. Okay. I think you just, just mentioned that uh, maybe the, these results are affected by the fact that those who are going for the two cent technique, they had more complex lesions. Sure. They are more uh, maybe uh, hemodynamic and more unstable. And uh, this affected the results that uh, they had worse outcome uh, than the uh, the other patients who had only one stent. Yeah. Maybe uh, this is their destiny. <laughs> Just a short comment. Uh, no. <coughs> you have a high TLR uh, in two stent strategy in left main bifurcation. Yeah. So was the TLR mainly driven by the side, like a side branch uh, restenosis or the main branch restenosis? Oh, uh, actually, we are uh, gathering the detailed information of uh, TLR. So. Uh, sooner or later, uh, this, uh, those results are, will be available. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. We're going for next uh, presentation, Idea Lift Main by Van Gibbs. Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, that we have uh, the opportunity to present to talk about Ideal Left Main at uh, this great meeting again. So uh, that was the title, Improved Drug Eluting Stent for All Commerce Left Main. And I have to thank Keith Oldwright, being my partner in this study during the process of development and uh, uh, completion of the trial and the rest of the investigators. Uh, this is a disclosure trial slide. We have a consultancy with Boston. Um, and we have to realize that we talked about a novel, potentially improved drug eluting stent when we designed Ideal Left Main many years ago. We're talking about strut thickness, we're talking about a biodegradable polymer, the abluminal coating, uh, versus the science, uh, for which I think you know the, the design's concept. Realizing with the biodegradable coating, we decided to want to try to work with the short DPT for four months in the arm of Synergy, while the standard 12 months uh, re was related to the science. The primary endpoint of the study, two years maze, death MI, and ischemia-driven target, target vessel revascularization. Um, some more uh, uh, about the design of the studies. So this was co called all commerce, means that even patients with high syntax, above 32 was possible, ACS patients were allowed. There was no restriction on ejection fraction. In the end, we used 29 sites in five countries, and we have clinical follow-up 6, 12, and 24 months uh, to get all the endpoints registered. Uh, we had an initial group of 100 patients in each arm, the OCT, uh, for strut coverage at the PCR 2017 and recently published in the JCC intervention as a letter with similar strut coverage in both devices. So the, uh, again, in, in summary, the inclusion uh, criteria, all comers, patients only had had an indication for revascularization of the left main according to the ESC guidelines and we wanted to be sure that the patient was discussed with a cardiac surgeon like a heart team prior to the PCI procedure. Uh, you can see some of the exclusion criteria, cardiogenic shock, recent STEMI, ma major surgery, uh, previous or planned within the next period. We had the power calculation based on an event rate of 20% for the maze uh, at two years with a non-inferiority margin of 7.5%, a power of 85%, which did bring the sample size to 409 patients for each arm. During the inclusion, uh, we had some patients who were uh, informed and uh, randomized. In the end, either the FFR or another reason uh, was negative or there was another reason not to do the PCI of the left main, potentially PCI of another vessel, but not of the left main. So we had to replace these patients, ending up uh, in September 2016 with 818 patients as the intended treated, in intention to treat population. Uh, 410 in Synergy, 408 in Science. You can see our follow-up, which is uh, up to 97.7% .7 of the patient was complete after two years. We only have few missed visits at uh, 24 months, hardly any uh, withdrawals by the patients. Uh, you can see our top including uh, centers uh, based in uh, Russia, Moscow, and Novorozorovich. Dr. Kratov and Markulov, over 100 patients uh, treated for the left main randomized within the study, and uh, all the different sites. And again, th want to thank our uh, local investigators to including so many patients for this study. 
in average, what was a bit surprised to me was the age was 66 years uh, uh, in average. Uh, you can see quite some previous PCI uh, and also the distribution for clinical um, stable angina 50%, ACS 37%, uh, some less recent STEMI uh, 17%. Sorry, that's the wrong button. Now, we, we talked about the, the inclusion criteria that the patients had to be discussed in the HAR team. So we asked the, the operators what was the decision to go for PCI. So 90, uh, over 90% was eligible for surgery. Uh, there also means that less than 10% were not truly really non-surgical candidates, although there was a preference by the HAR team for a PCI according to comorbidities, either low syntax score, and some other reasons, uh, which was mainly the, after discussion with the patient, that was seemed to be the patient's preference to have the PCI, with some kind of equipoise the, the, the decision by the HAR team. Radio access, I think that, that we have improved a lot. We are over 80% in the radio access in, the, in this steroid period. You can see the distribution, left main only, and then you can see left main, one vessel disease, etc., etc. Mean syntax score 21. That resulted in the end of a number of stents used for the left main, 1.3 uh, uh, per patient, and a number of stents outside the left main was 1.1. Then we're going to go for the primary outcome measurements. You can see it was uh, lower than expected. Synergy was 14%. The science was 11%. So we are really, really down with uh, less than 50% while we had a power based on 20%. The difference between the two strategies was uh, 3%. Uh, the previous set, non viral margin, 7.5%. If you bring in the confidence intervals, you can see that the confidence interval didn't go over the 7.5%. Five percent. That means statistically we can say there was non-inferiority confirmed by the study. If we look at the death uh, in the different endpoints, uh, you can see all cause deaths is similar. Uh, there is some difference, or ten to difference in all in all MI, um, and some numerical differences. But all the testings were negative based on the on the p-values uh, between the two strategies. If you show that as a Kaplan-Meier curve. Uh, the same 3% difference you see, this was uh, non-significant again. And then we look a little bit at the landmark analysis where you have uh, the difference in the period between 4 and 12 months, that's the difference in the DPT strategy, no difference between the two arms in, in that period. We go for the MI, there are some, you see visually some difference, but in the end no difference, really, really early starting on and then parallel lines, um, MI and ischemia driven target vessel revascularization. Bark, that was an interesting that we had more bleedings in the shorter DPT arm. We can talk about that uh, later. I uh, can uh, have that in details. You can see it's a majority of them are outside the window where we had difference in therapy and we had quite some interactions with OX or no X. A definite stent thrombosis. No stent thrombosis between the period when the patients were on aspirin only versus uh, on DAPT. So what we had a kind of strength strategies, well, that's the thing we didn't discuss at TCT so much. You can see the 78% one cent strategy, 22% two cent strategy, that is lower than in COBUS as we have seen again. Mainly main across uh, with the side branch, main across sites as a first approach, uh, 80%. Uh, proximal only, 12%, and then we had a one stent technique in the end of 79% uh, in the end of the procedure. Again, it's not surprisingly, we have seen from another difference that the two stents versus one stents, if you need two stents, either the two stents is not favorable for the patient or showing that the patients have more complex disease and have uh, significant more events uh, versus uh, one stent only. Uh, if we do that in a formal sub-analysis, you can see that there was no interaction between multiple stents versus a single stent in the primary endpoint. Also, I wanted to show you that although the IVIS use tended to go in one direction, if you look for the official P for interaction, uh, I, the I, IVIS didn't have an impact on, on the, the difference in the strategies. In conclusion, after two years, an ideal left main, the synergy was confirmed non-inferiority to, to the science based on the preset uh, statistical analysis plan. 
No difference in ischemic events up to 24 months, no difference in definite probable stent thrombosis, and especially not in the period when the synergy was of the DAPT. We had some excess in BARC 3.5 bleeding in the short depth group, which we really didn't understand, but we showed you some details and realized in the end that the trial is not powered for bleeding events. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Robert Jan. Do we have some comments from the panel? Questions from the audience? So uh, now we are in the era of uh, single antiplatelets. And so uh, do you think that uh, this also will, will go with the other concepts, like the stop dapt and the, the uh, uh, other concept that uh, it's better to use one antiplatelet not uh, that is not aspirin, what do you think if you had uh, the chance to, to do another study, do you think this would be better uh, rather than aspirin? B2Y12 instead of the dual and yeah, we, the beginning? We, we, we could go uh, on single ND platelet uh, with, with um, uh, Prasugrel or Tachacrelor only and dropping the aspirin. That is, of course, what we see a lot of new studies coming on, like Twilight. Twilight is interesting because it absolutely excluded left main disease, so it was very good that we were in the late breaking sessions just close to twilight because twilight was, was showing the group without left mains and this was dedicated on the left main. What we have realized, I think mainly during the study, the first thing is that we said, if we look at what are we doing in clinical practice, we expected a lot of non-surgical candidates, which are potentially older than Excel or Noble. Our age is pretty similar. We only ended up with 10% or less than 10% where the surgeon said, I don't want to operate. Then you have the comorbidities where the heart team, uh, which is 20, 30%, where the comorbidities where the heart team decides there's really the, the doctor's decision to go for. So these are potentially high-risk bleeding, older patients and high-risk bleeding patients. And I think there's the, the reason that we say uh, for left main, we can potentially do, do shorter DAPT without an ischemic risk. Um, on the other hand, we see potentially some ischemic events later on. And if you look at the number of patients who have a high syntax score, some expression of that these are high ischemic risk patients, um, a patients who had previous ACS or pre previous procedures, if you look at Pegasus criteria for prolonged DAPT, uh, I think that we have to find an optimal balance again also in our patients. If it's just a left main stent, I'm not worried about the, sh the timing for the DAPT. Short three months is probably, four months is probably enough. On the other hand, if you have a patient who has extensive three-vessel disease, a lot of is ischemic events, potentially they are still better off with a, a prolonged DAPT. Thank you very much. That's yeah. We will now move forward to and invite uh, Dr. Cardota to the uh, podium, talking about multicenter left main PCI registry in Japan. Please. Present. I talk about the uh, Japanese LMC uh, registry, our LMC registry, uh, focusing the stent strategy, comparing one stent per, uh, and two stent strategy. Uh, this is uh, registry investigators. Uh, our LMC registry uh, was an investigator initiated multi center registry conducted at uh, six centers in Japan around 2004 to 2012. Uh, uh, 1,809 consecutive patients underwent coronary stent implantation or significant LMC region were uh, retrospectively enrolled. Uh, this study has bare metal first generation and second generation deaths. Uh, uh, the co primary outcome measure were TLR and uh, all uh, cause deaths uh, at five years. Uh, this slide shows a patient characteristic uh, uh, age of this study was uh, 72 years old, and diabetes merit patients was uh, 40 percent, and uh, shock patients were included in this study. This slide shows a, a region-based analysis. Uh, 289 patients. Without bifurcation region, uh, patients were compared with 
1,318 patients with bifurcation lesions were compared. This slide shows the clinical outcomes according to region types, bifurcation and non-bifurcation. There was no significant difference between the, uh, two groups, uh, TLR or cause death, cardiac death, and stent thrombosis. Uh, next, we uh, evaluated the uh, strategy, uh, strategy based analysis. This uh, study, uh, non crossover stenting for non bifurcation uh, strategy and bifurcation strategy, one stent strategy and two stent strategy. And this slide so shows the uh, clinical out outcomes according to, according to, to stenting strategy. Uh, all cause death and cardiac death, there was no significance between three groups. However, TLR and stent thrombosis, uh, there is a significant difference. Uh, two stent strategy was uh, higher uh, than uh, one stent strategy. This slide shows a one-year landmark analysis of TL and, and stent thrombosis. As you can see, uh, the difference of two stent, two stent strategy and one, stu one stent strategy was uh, within one year. After one year, there was no stent thrombosis um, uh, between uh, three groups. It is a uh, most important point of our studies. Uh, summary, the long-term outcomes after stent implantation for unprotected LMC region were not determined by the bifurcation region types, but were related to the two-stent strategy. Also, the difference in the rate of TLR and stent, stent thrombosis between one stent and two stent strategy were observed within one year. Uh, next, we uh, evaluated, uh, evaluated the drug editing stent implantation after uh, rotational astrectomy uh, for LMC uh, bifurcation region. This slide uh, shows a study uh, flow chart of this evaluation. Uh, 108 patients treated with rotational acerectomy and 1,091 patients treated without rotational acerectomy. Uh, uh, 84 patients treated with, uh, with uh, one stent strategy and 24 patients treated with two, two, two stent strategy. This slide shows a kaplan meyer curve for clinical outcomes of uh, rotational acerectomy and non-rotational uh, acerectomy subgroups. There is uh, some uh, difference between uh, RA group and non-RA group. However, uh, uh, adjusted, uh, after adjusting, there was no uh, difference uh, or cause death, cardiac death, uh, TLR between RA and non-RA groups. Next, uh, we evaluate the uh, one stent versus two stent, stent subgroups of RA group. As you can see, uh, uh, all outcomes of one two stent strategy was significantly higher than one stent strategy. And this slide shows a uh, a uh, landmark analysis at one year in the RA group, one versus two stent, stent subgroups. As you can see, uh, the difference of one stent and two stent group, group was observed uh, within uh, one year. After one year, there was no significant difference. Uh, summary two, drug editing stent implantation after rotational acerectomy was a safe and feasible st strategy for complex bifurcation region. In this strategy, the two-stent st approach was associated with a markedly uh, worse five-year clinical outcome than the, than the uh, one-stent approach. The event uh, rate within one year was significantly higher for all, all cameras in the two-stent strategy a group than in the one stent strategy groups. Uh, this study is a limitation or a unique uh, characteristic of our registry. Uh, the stent types were 
bare metal stent, first generation and second generation stent was uh, included. Most common uh, drug uh, stent was a uh, first generation death. Uh, prevalence of use of intracoronary imaging was uh, about 70%. Prevalence of uh, port procedure was only uh, uh, 13%. Most common stent strategy was uh, pilot stent. Uh, conclusion, the AOE LMC registry uh, confirms that a simple strategy, strat uh, strategy could be recommended for treating left main bifurcation region, regions in real world practice. Meticulous care should be paid with uh, one year after using a complex stenting strategy, uh, 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 two stent strategy. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Kadota. Uh, one question: uh, Did you did you correct for the effect of time? Because it was from 2004, and uh, there was a lot of different stent used during that period of time. Was the worst outcome in the beginning, or was it the same? Uh, uh, pardon. Well, I was 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 it was the outcome when you compare to the beginning of your registry worth than in the end, because there must be an effect of time. More bare metal stent in the beginning, first generation stent, and then second uh, generation uh, stent. In this study, we uh, uh, use uh, 20 uh, variables adjusting. And in this variable, uh, stent type and uh, three period. One yeah, bare metal stent commonly used period, and second, uh, First generation deaths are uh, commonly used. And third, yeah, second generation deaths are uh, commonly used. That's an uh, uh, adjusted factor, period. Ah, very, very excellent. Thank you very much for these very, very interesting results. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we will move forward to discuss uh, DK Cross. So I would like to invite Dr. Sun to the podium to discuss. Uh, the long-term outcomes of DK cross three and DK cross five randomized studies, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to the, to say the topic about the long-term outcome of a DK cross study on left main bifurcation. I come from China. First is the disclosure statement of financial interest. Then, as, as we know that left main bifurcation has different characteristics compared with non-left main bifurcation. The lumen is large and uh, with severe black burden. The wider bifurcation angles, the occurrence of trifurcation or quadrifurcation, the incomputable phenomenon between sides of left main and the side branches of overwears. And the side branch of LC axis is very important for us. Let's, uh, but once the flow is comprised and will cause catastrophic outcomes, so we should pay attention to the left main bifurcation. Uh, according to the guidelines on myocardial revascularization, we know that left main disease is low and the intermediate syntax score we can treat is with PCI. According to the EBC councils, we know that provisional standing is the recommended strategy in most left in bifurcation. Planned two stand technique may be indicated in cases with long LCX, high risk of LCX compromise, or difficult access, and it's, and it's recommended to Harris to use the errors or OCT. According to another algorithm approach to left in bifurcation, about the ABC concerts, we know that for the comp complex reasons, we should uh, use two stents. Uh, DK crash is the first choice. Errors or, or OCT is suggested. Then, for the simple reasons, we should uh, provide no uh, standing. A side branch uh, comprise FFR below 0 0.8, all the below T3 flow, we can treat the, with the T type or Tulot standard. Then we see the DK crash the series. The first is the DK crash three. DK crash, DK crash three is the RGT study, uh, included the 
true bifurcation, left limb bifurcation, Medina 111 and the 011. Uh, all, all, all the people is uh, to, uh, 400 and uh, uh, 29. One year follow up and three years follow up. We can see that uh, the baseline information about the baseline clinical characteristics and the reason characteristics are well matched between the two groups. Then we see the one year the party leading free, party leading party leading calculation free survival rate and uh, see the party leading calculation and the party vessel calculation and all the miss uh, in the DQR group the survival rate is higher than the two lot group. Then we see the three years the, the follow up, two patients were lost in each group. We see the mates, all the mates, stand strong bosses and the target leading localization and the myocardial function. Uh, in the DK crash is lower misses than the two lot stent. Then we see the analysis about the subgroups. We can see that the complex leadings have the poor outcomes compared to simple lesions. Then in the MACE's uh, compact lesions, we can see that all the MACE in the compact lesions, the DQRH is 15.1, and the, uh, for the QLOT is 51.5, and the standstone bosses in the DQRH is 1.9, and the compared to QLOT is uh, 7.6. So DQRH 3 tells us that compared to the DQRH technique, to low standing is associated with the increased miss in patient left imperfection, especially in the complex lesions. Then we see the DK craft file. DK craft file is the first ICT compared to the two stand versus one stand in the left limb bifurcation, Medina 111 and Medina 011. 484 patients were included. Uh, each group is 242 patients. Uh, follow up one year and three, uh, follow up one year and three, and the three years. Uh, primal endpoint is a tardy leader failure at one year. We can see that uh, in the tardy leader failure, the, in the uh, DK quark group is 50, is 50, is 5, is 5 percent, and in the uh, prevention standing is 10.7. It's very different. And the stance wrong bosses in the uh, is 0 0.4, and uh, in the previous standing is 3.3. .3. Also, is different. Then we see the analysis about subgroups. We can see for the complex lesions, DQRH is 7.0 percent, and for the provisional standing is 18.2 percent. It is significantly different. Then we see the three years follow up. About the baseline information, we can see that uh, compared to the prevalence standing, DQRH go up the time and the contrast uh, uh, is uh, times long and the contrast is, uh, is more. So the, uh, as we see that there is no pain, no, no gain. So, so the DQRH is uh, uh, multiple stamps. Let me see the three years of pattern Tardy leader failure. We can see that uh, compared to previous standing, the quad group has uh, lower the tardy leader failure, and uh, the tardy vessel malcounting function and the tardy leader vascularization is also lower than the previous standing. Cardiac death, cardiac death is not different. Then we see the stand strong both We can see that. Uh, Compared to the preventive standing, the DQRH in one year is 0 0.4, and in the uh, three years is 0. Compared to the preventive standing, in one year is 3.3, .3, and uh, in the three years is 0 0.9. So DQRH file tells us that in a planned DQRH to stand strategy reduced the target leading failure, and the stand strong bosses through three years follow up with the one stand strategy in patients with the two left limb bifurcation lesions. So I think that for a, limb, uh, for a simple left limb bifurcation, uh, a single stand provisional standing is, uh, can be uh, suggested. 
while a two slant strategy is preferred for comp compass reasons. This crash is a default choice in two slant strategy. The ongoing EBC main study will provide additional information on the optimal treatment of left main publication reasons. Thanks, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a very clear and precise uh, presentation and for having this long follow-up, which gives us a lot of information. I have one question. There was an angiographic follow-up after 12 months in DK cross 5. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Could, could we see a jump in the kaplan meyer curve? We have been discussing this uh, problem earlier today. Could it be due to the angiographic follow-up that there's a lot of revascularization in the TLR group exactly at 12 months? Because the, the curve was basically par parallel until one year and then parallel again from one year to three year. Yeah. So that, could that be an explanation? The, the angiographic follow-up causes an intervention. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, other comments? What? Back? Oh, uh, the errors is below the 50 rate. Very good. Thank you very much. Very nice oh, presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> now we're moving forward with the long term results. So I'll please invite uh, Dr. Frank to the podium to talk about the uh, long term result of PCI of unprotected left main coronary artery stenosis. And I guess it will be out of the Bad Kreuzerling uh, registry. Very good evening. Thank you for the invitation. So I'm back to the European uh, region and uh, I show you the, the data from our um, Leftman registry, uh, which uh, was already published. So you see we are um, quite a huge center in the corner of Germany and uh, together with Freiburg, we are really a uh, huge institution, so we have uh, 11, uh, 15 cath labs and perform together with Freiburg around 5,000 PCIs a year. So we have uh, many patients uh, uh, sending to us from different hospitals, so there was a networking. But what we now observe for one, two, three years, uh, we got uh, less and less patients from um, different hospitals, so doctors are now convinced to perform a left main PCI um, at home. So very, very clear topic, uh, left main, uh, this left main stenosis is mostly um, in the left main stenosis, so we have around 80%. So and uh, now we, uh, it was really a big effort to get data uh, for 10 years, and um, this is um, what I will present today. So we have around 900 patients with uh, unprotected uh, distal left main stenosis and uh, around 500 patients were treated with um, single stenting and obligatory final kissing balloon dilatation and around 400 patients were treated with double stenting. So we have a clinical follow-up up to 10 years. And this is uh, just a uh, schematic um, um, uh, schema, shown schema how we uh, treat our patients single left uh, main, left main stenting mostly to the LAD and kissing with CERC and if double stenting was needed then uh, tap was in majority of cases done or a culotte with um, final uh, kissing balloon dilatation and in last years of course with final pot our patients are a bit older than in ideal left main study. They are over uh, 70 years old, 30% uh, diabetes, and uh, of course, uh, unprotected, unprotected left main LV function um, uh, around 50% injection fraction. And we have here uh, also patients included with acute coronary syndromes. Only patients with cardiogenic shock and uh, cases with impella. Uh, were excluded. Okay, thank you. So, um, of course, all uh, the patients and very sick 
um, and um, in majority of cases, a multivessel disease. We have uh, Medina 1.1 distribution in around 30% in single stenting, but in 60% of cases in double stenting and uh, through bifurcation um, situation or through bifurcation uh, lesion is uh, in f was found in 40% in single and uh, more than 80% in double stenting. So this is a highly significant uh, difference. Um, Calcification was also moderate um, found in both um, treatment arms. And this was uh, also ongoing problem if we have really severe calcified uh, distal left knee, that's, uh, that's a problem. So as you can see, in majority of cases, um, around 90% of cases were treated with TAP and around 10% uh, using collot technique. So this is um, fluoroscopy time um, in average 16 minutes versus 21 minutes. Um, it was significantly longer uh, if double stenting was performed. Uh, according to the clinical uh, data, you see this is um, all camera data from, um, from our center and we found um, death in 26% versus 23 after double stenting. We found um, definite stent thrombosis in 0 0.4 versus no stent thrombosis found in a double stenting, but definite probable in 1.3% versus 2.1% after double stenting. And of course, target lesion revascularization was significantly different, 17% after single stenting versus 27% after double stenting, and the maze was mainly driven by tail air uh, difference. And this is Kaplan Meyer curve. <coughs> As you can see, there is a no big difference, um, practically um, same curve uh, for four years, and then uh, slightly difference um, between both study uh, treatments and study groups. Death MI, uh, very similar. Uh, no significant difference, but we found definitely the difference of uh, according to target lesion revascularization, and as you can see, there were in many patients because initially we performed practically in all patients uh, reangiom. So uh, if there was if there was a problem um, by reangio, so re PCI was done. But you see, during the follow up there was no huge difference uh, between both curves. And again, MACE, <coughs> first um, half year, after one year, practically no significant difference, and after 10 years, curves are coming uh, back. So we were interested to see, um, to make a difference, first year versus um, year one to 10, and we performed a landmark analy analysis, and what we found um, there was there was um, after <coughs> in the first in the first year there was a significant difference regarding maze driven by target lesion revascularization. In the first year, there was no significant difference between single and double stenting. Um, between um, for, for first year and even uh, death, definitely uh, you see very similar curves. And if you follow up patients after one year, you see practically um, practically identical curves, uh, Kaplan-Meier curves, and no significant difference. And the the only difference we uh, saw it was regarding targ target lesion revascularization. There was still uh, benefit for single stenting. However, if you see combined um, endpoint death MI, we had even better, uh, even after adjustment for, uh, um, for differences, we see even uh, better results for double stenting as well for, for death. <coughs> so in conclusion, uh, compared with single stenting, double stenting was 
associated with a significantly higher long-term risk of maize uh, driven by target lesion revascularization, higher incidence of TLR, whereas uh, the risk of death, MI, or stent thrombosis was similar. So we um, believe after critical first year, the maize during long-term follow-up is very similar, practically identical, between single and double stenting. And of course, we are waiting for the results of ABC main study, which will be hopefully soon ready. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Marek. Uh, two questions. Uh, the effect of time, it, 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 it's a registry which has been running for 10 years. Yes. So some of the patients have a follow-up of 10 years and some of them have a follow-up yeah. of five the medi days. The, the median, uh, yeah, if they die or with, if they have uh, an yeah. uh, event, yes, but uh, already we have a median follow-up of 4.7 years. Yeah. But, but, but um, we cannot wait. Uh, no, no, it's just to understand the differences. So yes, the, yes, that's correct. So the, the second question is the target lesion revascularization, yeah. was it driven by by a planned angio follow-up at one year? And if yes, did you have the same follow-up <coughs> for every year in the 10 years period? <coughs> yes, the, the, um, um, at least for first seven years, we had definitely a re-angio, which was part of our um, S SOP. And after many years, because we saw the data is still quite good, so we, we, we didn't order patients back uh, to get six-month month range. Uh, were there were uh, consecutive patients? Pardon? Consecutive patients? Yeah, consecutive patients. And you don't have any other uh, two-stent technique rather than tap and... No, we don't have any crush. We, we never perform classical crush in our center, never. And for now, we perform, of course, sticky crush. Um, but for this study patient subset, there is nobody with sticky crush. I can guarantee this. Uh, can I <laughs> Only tap and cool out. Uh, so you, uh, when you have to start with the side, side branch first, because it is intention to treat with two stents, use always only cool out. Because TM protrusion is a second stent. It's not a T. You say TM protrusion. So you, you start always with culotte. If we, if we go uh, with culotte. With two starting side branch first. Only culotte. Uh, not, not, not always, because sometimes you can go from a left man to a lady, and then if you need one stand more, and there is a no, favor. No, starting, starting main branch first. But if you have to start side branch first, you have a long... Look, at in the left circuit. main, there is sometimes very difficult to make this decision, because you have huge LED, you have huge circ, and uh, you go according to the, um, to the anatomy. How is the plug distribution? How is the angle? I think this is uh, more important. No, I, I'm just looking at the surprise of Remo, but uh, Remo, I did a lot of left main. Never, I began with the side branch. Never, never, not a case. Not a case. So this is possible. So this is possible. You yeah. can confirm this is possible to do double stunting, always beginning with the main vessel. This is possible. Yeah, of we course. are doing that. This is possible, but it's very, uh, you know, it takes a lot of risk. If you have a diffuse, classifying, long lesion, the side branch, you start with the side branch first. This is, you know, it's common sense. But if if we have okay. bad result, you can imagine that we won't do that. Thierry, well, are we closing a lot of side branch? Uh, Eve, Eve and Raimo, I thank you very much for this very engaged discussion. Yeah. And I recommend that you continue afterwards. Just, just <laughs> a, a short answer about that. Yeah. We start going to the side branch when the side branch is difficult to access. But then we can do a provisional again. So it's provisional, left man, circ, and then pot, then open the strut, and then decide if we put a stent in, in the course, LED. Of course, we, we, we totally agree with, because this is the consensus document. Yeah, yeah but it's but, uh, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, but actually, in the sake of time, thank you very much, uh, Marek. This is a fantastic registry. And we have to realize this is a European single center registry with about uh, 1,000 left mains, which is quite amazing.
we move forward and now we are going to the firework as I was uh, telling you in the beginning because now we are going to discuss the uh, recent results from the two largest trial on uh, left main treatment uh, versus uh, cabbage. We'll, we'll start with the Nobel trial, five years uh, results update. Uh, please, Nils Holm. Thank you very much. So the investigators listed here have all been very active uh, in the European Bifurcation Club. So today it's a huge honor to be here to present this trial, to present the five-year follow-up. It's also a pleasure to present it back-to-back -back with Professor Sirois, who's been the main character in, in at least more than one uh, left main trial. So very impressive. Um, the background um, for this update on the five-year outcome was that the initial Nobel report in Lancet, uh, published in Lancet in 2016, indicated that PCI was inferior to cabbage uh, for the primary endpoint. Mortality was similar, no difference in stroke, but we had higher rates of spontaneous MI and revascularization after PCI. So, subsequently, um, the three main studies and also Noble uh, on left main uh, evaluation um, led to this uh, uh, class one indication along cabbage for treatment of left main stenosis in patients with syntax score lower than 23. So, So the design of the Nobel trial, it was a randomized, investigator-initiated, non-inferiority trial performed in Northern Europe, 36 centers. Uh, the primary endpoint was a composite of death from any cause, non-procedural myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, and stroke. So we required uh, 1,200 patients and 275 events. And uh, earlier this year, the 275 events had occurred, and the trial is now conclusive. So the five-year follow-up is complete, and 92% had a full five-year follow-up, and more than 98% of the total follow-up time was completed. So the primary endpoint, as it was presented in 2016, showed that PCI did not reach the threshold for claiming non-inferiority to cabbage. The updated endpoint now with the conclusive is the same, PCI still do not reach the threshold for claiming non-inferiority. You can see the kaplan meyer estimate is are almost unchanged. Looking at the individual endpoints for all cause mortality, and very importantly, they are similar, 9% after cabbage and PCI. Remember the 9%, in a moment you will hear the uh, Excel numbers, and um, it uh, has been repeatedly claimed that uh, PCI was worse or inferior in the Nobel trial, um, but uh, try to remember the 9% in each group here. Myocardial infarction is not comparable because we only report non-procedural myocardial infarction. We did not include the peri-procedural myocardial infarctions, they were balanced um, in, for the two groups, but reported independently. Um, uh, the reasons for that uh, at the time, not to include them, was that we, it, we knew it was associated with mortality already at the time, but we do count mortality already in the primary endpoint. Repeat revascularization. Again, remember the kaplan meier estimates of 17% and 10%, of course, in favor here of uh, cabbage. Stroke rates were low, uh, but we didn't see a difference as in other trials here in the Nobel trial in favor of PCI. Okay. So secondary endpoints, target lesion revascularization, that includes both the left main and other study lesions, were uh, 12 and 8%. De novo revascularization was significantly higher on PCI. Uh, 7 versus 3%, we don't get the proximal protection uh, with grafts, as with grafts. Target uh, left main revascularization was 10 and 7%. Definite stent thrombosis was, or graft occlusion was 2 and 4%. 
Please recall also the previously reported that re-operation for bleeding was less than 1% after PCI and 4% after the cabbage. Blood transfusion was 2% versus 28%. This is a multi-center trial, so it is across 36 centers practice. And of course, surgery for sternum infection only occurred in cabbage arm, only three cases, but still one out of 200. And these patients were admitted for a very extended, uh, a prolonged time. Duration of the index treatment admission was uh, median two days after PCI and nine days after cabbage. The two days after PCI also reflects that 20% of the cases were uh, ACS patients in this trial. In the subgroup analysis for age, gender, body mass index, diabetes, lesions to be treated, acute coronary syndrome, uh, distal left main lesions, um, syntax score, we did not found, find any interactions. If we anyhow look at the syntax uh, subgroups, the upper one here is the most important one. It's also the one with most power, more than 600 patients, that in the syntax uh, score group of 1 to 22, there was a huge difference in favor of cabbage. Most of these patients only received the lima graft, and they did very well with cabbage. And the, of course, it's a subgroup analysis. The study was not powered for this, and we should be careful with p-values, but it was a highly significant difference. The two other groups were quite small, and even when we combine them, we don't see a, a significant difference. In the age stratified analysis, we had in the younger patients uh, under uh, 67 a quite a comparable outcome, whereas in the older population, you see a major separation here after two years, uh, quite comparable here until two years, but after that, a major separation if you are above 67 years old. In a gender stratified analysis, we saw a quite interesting uh, difference. You know, PCI for men and women were similar, but the females had very good results with cabbage. Again, it's a subgroup analysis, and um, uh, there was no interaction, and it should only be considered as hypothesis generating. So, in conclusion, the Noble trial is conclusive. PCI was inferior to cabbage in treatment of left main stenosis at five years for the primary endpoint. Importantly, mortality was similar for PCI and cabbage. Difference in MACE was driven by higher rates of non-procedural myocardial infarction and repeat revascularization after PCI. A syntax score below 23 did not identify a subgroup with a more balanced outcome. Cabbage had longer index admissions, more re-operations, and more blood transfusions. Importantly, as mortality was similar for PCI and cabbage, PCI may still be a viable option. But that definitely require a good collaboration with the surgeons, and even more important, a thorough balanced discussion with the patient on the pros and cons of both cabbage and PCI. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nils, for a very clear presentation. I think this is now open for discussion. Can we, yeah, we have a, a question. Nice presentation, uh, congratulations. Could you please cite the rate of uh, intravascular imaging use in the PCI arm, if available? Yes, so uh, it was uh, highly recommended to do uh, IVUS guiding, uh, but the numbers were still uh, not 100%. It was uh, roughly 70%, as I recall, for either pre or post IVUS but not systematically used. There was no protocol for how to use it. And actually, we did not really see a major difference in outcome between those that were IVOS guided and non IVOS guided. But it was unstructured used and probably mostly for documentary use. So uh, in your studies, the ACEs was a very important. More than 60, 67 was a, a very poor outcome with the PCI. But the only AZ is PCI outcome was better. So can you explain why that, that finding was uh, happened? Sorry, that PCI was better? Yes, yes uh, according to AZ. So you cut uh, 67. Yeah. yeah. So why the difference within the AZ? Well, um, we cannot you know, explain that based on this trial why we see this difference. But it seems that in our elderly population, 
we have a tendency you know, to claim that PCI is, is maybe the option if you have a shorter lifespan, but the lifespan has to be very short, you know, up to two years. After that, the curves really separate in favor of cabbage. So um, PCI may be a good option for those with very short lifespan, but uh, if um, uh, you have just slightly longer uh, expectations, then the patients fare much better with cabbage. I know it didn't really answer your question why we do see this, but we don't have uh, an explanation in our data set for um, why we do have this difference. You, just a question. You mentioned you have a part of patients with uh, only tor IMA, Thoracica to yes. LAD graft, right? Yes. How many patients? I don't recall the numbers, sorry. But it's, it's, it's probably half the patients. It's only a li little less than half the patients. Yes. Um, it's really only one graft. Yes. I, I, sorry, I, I really don't recall the numbers right now. I'll, I'll look it up. So, yeah. But it's, it's, it's a quite a substantial portion, actually, and they do very well. So, yeah. Nils, what was the definition of MI? Because I'm very surprised that you have three times more MI in PCI and no difference in mortality. That's, uh, for me, it's, uh, I don't understand. As you can have 7% instead of 2% of MI, and you have no difference in mortality. So explain well, me, what is, the ex well, what is the definition of MI? So the definition of I know, uh, I don't know. No, so the spontaneous MI after a procedure, so after the first 48 hours, was based on, on the, the universal uh, definition of myocardial infarction. So that, you know, was uh, troponin, uh, and then- uh, So patients are not dying of MI now, today? No, so that's one thing, but we also followed the patients for 10 years. Um, so if we see a difference, that it causes a difference. That's also what we need to see, for example, with the peer procedure myocardial infarction. We need to follow the patient for a prolonged time. Uh, we saw that, I will not go into because the next talk will cover uh, some of it, I'm absolutely sure. Uh, but the, the longer term follow-up still looks like we will have a balanced outcome. So, yeah. Thierry? Um. Unlike in Excel, in Noble trial, there have been at least two different type of scans been used. Have you looked at the outcome according to the type of scan used? Yes, thank you very much for that question. Um, we did have the first uh, 73 patients, as I recall, uh, received a uh, first generation drug eluding stand or other uh, bare metal stand in the beginning. So we had a beginning before we got sponsoring of the trial, it was very early uh, experience this. Um, uh, that we that patients receive this, we have 44 patients that receive the cipher uh, stent, and they have a higher mortality. But if you see at the impact on, uh, of course, it's very small numbers. Uh, but if you see the impact on mace, they had exactly the same mace rate uh, or MAC rate in in um, in uh, in that subgroup that didn't receive the biometric stent. So we cannot see that it causes a difference. But they actually had a, a, a higher mortality. But again. Uh, it's, it's numerically higher, but it's substantially higher. Thank, thank you very much. We have uh, a, a few questions again, but I, th I will ask you kindly to s raise questions directly uh, to the design in this trial, and then I think we should have the, have the Excel uh, presentation and then take the discussion in, in common so we can have uh, all, if, if it's okay. Absolutely. Good. But then I will invite uh, Patrick Sorales to the podium to give the uh, Excel five years and syntax 10 years follow-up data. And then we can have the balance of every, uh, a balanced discussion of everything afterwards. Thank you. Please, Thank Patrick. you very much. I think it's, uh, it's a long story, five years and 10 years. Uh, I found some uh, pictures, if I may have my slide. I found these pictures, I mean, one is in the syntax in 2003. You could see Frederick Moore, uh, Marie-Claude Maurice, Antonio Colombo, uh, Michael Mack was there, Keith Dawkins, and then uh, in July 2009, we start the Excel. That's the first investigator meeting of uh, Excel with uh, Puskas, Frederick Moore, Marty Leon, um, of course, Greg Stone, myself, and again, Marie-Claude uh, Marie Maurice in the corner there. So it takes a lot of time to do this trial and came to the conclusion. And one young surgeon of the Dark Center 
uh, together and supported by the Frederick Moore and some money from the German society, uh, went for the 10 years follow-up of uh, syntax, and we call that syntaxis extended. And uh, we have been uh, quite, uh, it's quite our expertise today to have the search of vital status in global leaders. We had 16,000 patients and we had a vital status in 99.95%. It's really an exercise, but I think that uh, we all agree that uh, all cause mortality is an indisputable endpoint. There's no discussion about that. And as you could see, we had uh, 94.5 and 93.1% in this uh, trial. Immediately, the 10 years all cause mortality, pulling the three vessel disease and the main stem. Hazard ratio 117, you see the 95% confidence interval below one and above one. Uh, the numbers for PCI all cause mortality 28.2%, and uh, bypass surgery 24.6% and a p-value of 0.092. If you go to the three-vessel disease, when we are still struggling with the three-vessel disease, PCI 29% and cabbage 21.6%. So there is an increase in risk of 41%. If you go to PCI, you see the 95% confidence interval and the p-value 0.006. I have to remind you that the syntax 2 is now equal, at least for the first three years, to the old bypass surgery of syntax 1. Now, the good news, the good news is that we've left Maine. Uh, as you could see, uh, the blue line is uh, cabbage, 29.3%, and PCI, 27.1%. So the hazard ratio is, a matter of fact, 0.9, a benefit of 10%. It is, of course, not significant. Now, I've been always uh, obsessed by uh, having a customized individual advice for the patient based not only on uh, anatomical data, but also clinical characteristic, and that's the syntax score 2 that we have published in the Lancet in 2013. And just in a nutshell, the syntax score 2 was developed by applying a Cox proportional hazard model to the result of syntax trial, obtaining a combination of clinical and anatomical independent predictors of four years mortalities, all cause mortality. So you take the syntax score, you take the left main, the age, the creatine clearance, the ejection fraction, the gender, the peripheral vascular disease, and the COPD, and you can quite well predict the four years mortality. As a matter of fact, you have on the website these uh, parameters. As you could see here, syntax score, age, creatine clearance, ejection fraction, and so on. You fill in, for one patient, you fill in this information, and if the patient goes to surgery or is supposed to go to surgery, in this case, he has a total of 30 points, and his four years mortality is 6.8%. Uh, you take the same patient and you apply the uh, parameter for PCI, and you see that you have 40 points, and the four years mortality is 15.1. So if you go to the uh, website, uh, you have really a nice uh, recommendation. Uh, this first patient has a score in PCI of uh, 14%, oops, sorry, 14%, and uh, mortality of 15% versus 4.2. So the treatment recommendation is bypass surgery. But if you look at this one, uh, PCI score 35 versus 55 for surgery, 10 years mortality, 10% versus 42.7%, that patient should go to PCI. 
It could be an old lady with COPD and peripheral vascular disease. You are not going to give that to the surgeon. It is for us. The most interesting group is, of course, when you have an identical score of 35, uh, then you have a mortality of 10.5 versus 9.9. This is what we call in our jargon, equipoise. Now, we have done something very interesting that you will see in uh, publication very soon, two times, by the way. We took the syntax population. Of course, we don't have the syntax score two in all patients, but the number is uh, very small. And what we do is that we calculate the syntax score as if all the patients would be randomized to cabbage, and we calculate the syntax score for PCI as if all the patients were going to PCI. That's a good exercise, by the way, that we published five years ago in the uh, European Heart Journal. And what you have is that you have case where PCI should be preferred, cabbage should be preferred, and a group of equipoise. That's the recommendation. Now, the beauty, the beauty of the randomization is that you impose another type of treatment. So here you have the randomization of uh, Excel, uh, randomization cabbage versus PCI. And as you could see, if uh, you go further, you will have concordance and discordance between the treatment. Uh, you have here PCI preferred, but nevertheless, 51 patient has been randomized uh, to cabbage. Uh, cabbage preferred, but uh, the number are more or less equal, but uh, 273 patients has been randomized to PCI. In other words, you have sometimes concordant and discordant uh, treatment. And then if you look at uh, what happens in the, uh, uh, the case of the syntax uh, trial, uh, you could see that here you have a certain group of patients who had the recommendation of cabbage only Nevertheless, some of them went to, to PCI. And you could see that if you send to PCI a patient in whom the recommendation by the syntax score 2 is to go to cabbage, then you have a very poor outcome, 30% mortality at 10 years versus 24. Vice versa, if the patient is recommended to PCI only and you don't respect that by randomization, or in the real life, then you see the mortality of cabbage is very high and the mortality of PCI is low. And it's very pleasant to see that if the recommendation by the syntax score is equipoise, uh, the two curves are almost superimposed. Now, what is the take home message here is that first randomized to report 10 years of survival after cabbage or PCI with drug eluting stent in patients with de novo trivessel and left main disease uh, has been reported at 10 years. It was not easy, but uh, it's done. The completeness of the information is 94%. There was no survival difference between cabbage and PCI at 10 years in overall cohort. There is an increased survival with cabbage versus PCI in three vessel disease. There is comparable survival with cabbage and PCI in left main, that's the topic of today. And the non compliance to the syntax score to treatment recommendation result in a numerically higher risk of all cause death at 10 years. Now, the few words about Excel. Excel was, of course, a trial where we had 1,900 patients, theoretically, on paper, because the FDA didn't want it, you have to have the syntax score below 32. As a matter of fact, in the core lab, 27% of the patient had a syntax score above 32. And as you could see, we end up at five years with a follow-up which is quite reasonable of 93.2% and 19.1%. And you have seen this curve until three years. 
looking at the primary endpoint, which is all-cause death, stroke, or MI, there was a quite reasonable number, 15.4 and 14.7, so hazard ratio close to one, and a p-value of 0.93. And the curve went down, and then you see uh, the crossing of the two curve, and now the uh, PCI has a maze, primary endpoint, combining death, stroke, and MI of 22% versus 19.2%. Uh, this is an odd ratio of 1.19. There's still uh, a p-value of 0.13. But I can tell you, I just came back from my room in the hotel where we had a big debate. Uh, uh, David Tagart is on the phone, Adrian Banning is on the phone. Uh, they are all on the phone discussing what is the truth. Now, that's the reality. Now, I have a view a little bit different in the sense that if you look at the death stroke and MI, that's the number we have to see in 22 and 19.2, a difference of uh, 2.8. As you could see, the 95% confidence interval goes from minus 0.9 to 6.05. So you save the game with an odd ratio of 1.19. Uh, but if you look at death all goes, it's 13% and 9.9 .9 indisputable. All cause deaths, no adjudicates indisputable. And the difference is 3.1, going from 0 0.2 to 6.1, and that's an increased risk of 38%, and you see the 95% uh, confidence interval for the odd ratio. The interventional cardiologists will try to defend themselves by saying, you know, from this 3.1 all-cause mortality, 1.3 was cardiovascular, but 2% was non-cardiovascular. It's nice to say, but this patient has been randomized, and that's the way it is. Now, we did the same exercise again, and as you could see, this is the Galley proof, a Galley proof which is going to be published in the European Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery. And I started again, you have the patient of Excel, uh, you see the number, if all the patients would have been randomized to cabbage, if all the patients would have been randomized to PCI with the syntax score, you have the classical three group, PCI preferred, cabbage preferred, equipoise uh, according to the recommendation. That's beautiful because that's something that we did at baseline not knowing the result of the trial. It was not used in the trial. It was just an assessment in advance. And you can find that in European Heart Journal five years ago. Now, what is beautiful is that on one side, you have the recommendation, and on the other side, the randomization who supersede and impose this decision. And as you could see, again, you have here in the PCI patient, patient should have received the PCI, but 184 nevertheless received cabbage. Cabbage should have been preferred, but nevertheless, 81 patients were randomized to PCI. And then you have the equipoise, the big majority, 677 and 599. And you will have understood, uh, indeed, that there is patient where there is concordance between the recommendation and the randomization, and there is patient with discordance between the randomization and the recommendation. And that's what we call precision medicine, or at least we try. So what happens? Fascinating. Here is the patient recommendation cabbage. So that patient should have go to surgery but bad luck, he was randomized to PCI in blue. His mortality is 15.1. Hazard ratio, four. That's the, that's the uh, uh, mortality for the surgical group. 
Second group, very interesting, recommendation PCI and randomized to PCI. And you could see that the first 13 months, it went very well. They were better than surgery, but after 30 months, the mortality of the PCI increased. The surgeon has a difficult time at the beginning, but then gets stabilized. The beauty, finally, in all-cause mortality, in all-cause mortality is the Equipoise group. Because in the Equipoise group, we have a mortality, all-cause mortality for PCI of 9% and 7-6% for cabbage. That's an hazard ratio of 1.19, and we don't have a low crank significant 0.38. So this is something you have not yet seen. I think it's a kind of premiere. I even introduced Noble. Uh, as you could see, this is long-term all-cause mortality after left main treatment. And we start by syntax five years, 705 patients. You see the two curve, the blue is the cabbage, the red is the PCI, 14.6, 12.8. You go to pre-combat five years, 600 patients, 7.9 for surgery, 5.7 for uh, by PCI. You go to Noble, you just have seen the number, 9.4 and 8.7. Only in Excel five years, 1905 patient, we have 13% all-cause mortality for PCI, 9.9 for uh, cabbage. But I show you, if you had look at the recommendation that percentage would have been reduced to 1.4. They were obviously patients who should have received cabbage and when sent to PCI, that's something we should not do. Now the next is just an animation to show you what happens at 10 years in syntax in these 705 left main, 26.7 and 26.1. And of course, what is going to be published uh, very soon is this. This is the classical meta-analysis where you have a syntax, which is in terms of all-cause mortality, somewhat better than cabbage, as at ratio 0.88. Uh, you have pre-combat, which is somewhat better than the surgery in all-cause mortality, as at ratio 0.73. You have Excel, which is definitely significantly worse than a piece of cabbage, 1.33. You have Noble, which is there with 1.08. So far, if you look at the fixed effect model of the random effect model, you are 1.1 or 1.06, which is extremely reassuring for us interventional cardiologists. So take home message. Four randomized trial to report five year survival after cabbage or PCI with drug eluting stent in patient with de novo left main disease is available. No survival difference between cabbage and PCI at five years in the left main disease from a pool of patient level meta analysis. In the Excel trial, non-compliance to the syntax score two treatment recommendation for cabbage result in a significantly higher risk of all-cause death when randomized to PCI. A very important message because that's a little bit the beginning of precision medicine, uh, defining in advance who is going to die and who is going to die in a ratio which is not acceptable. That's an hazard ratio of four. Compliance of the syntax score to treatment recommendation, equipoise, result indeed in a non-significant difference in all-cause mortality when randomized either to cabbage or PCI. I think the news are quite good, uh, quite fascinating. Of course, there will be other trial. Uh, we didn't talk today, today about one, one stand to stand. I mean, that's for the next ABC, otherwise you don't get invited, so come on. Uh, <laughs> let's be serious, yeah.
Thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, we are running late, but I think we should at least save five minutes to discuss these very important data and very new informations. We have a comment from the audience. Roy, uh, Dan Virab from Atlanta. I think as one of the um, operators for Excel, what I felt was not as standardized was how you did your uh, provisional stenting or two stent technique if this was a complicated lesion. The people, different operators tried different things and different methods and the, the thing was, yeah, you wanted to put two stents in, you could do whatever you wanted. But there's no standardization of technique and even a part which we know as part now was, was, there was not there if you wanted to post dilate the left main stain, you could. So I think standardization of technique probably has a lot of, uh, a lot of bearing to what the outcomes were. And I think I, 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 want I, to I could not agree more. I mean, I think, you know, I, I showed that these two trials took uh, 16 years of my professional life. And before that, there was us in Cabri. So it's a, it's a never ending process, never ending process. When we went to the syntax two, we were doing the IFR in all vessel. We had the syntax score too to make the inclusion criteria. We did IVUS in almost all patients, and the good medication was there. And suddenly, we had a mortality of a MACE rate, which was equal to the old syntax one. But the IVUS went from 5% to 84%. And you're right. I mean, if you want to do another trial with, uh, with main stem, you will have a, a military a discipline to say in which case you do this and in which case you do that. Otherwise, it's a kind of uh, melt uh, pot, uh, potpourri, whatever you can call it. Thank you. Um, Patrick, did, yeah. you, did you take a look uh, regarding long-term results between did you see the difference between U.S. and European centers? That's a very difficult issue. <laughs> <laughs> I will not tell you the I will not tell you the uh, uh, Excel because not there is not yet legal preemption on no, that. No, but we have seen <laughs> noble I can, only I can tell you so. something which is going to please the French people. I mean, uh, Louvard and uh, uh, and Thierry are French. If you look at the syntax one the people who use the smallest number of stand, the total length of stand were the French people, 47 millimeter. And the people who looked the longer total length of the stand was my friend from Hungary, 117 millimeter. Now I can tell you there was an inverse relationship between <laughs> maze and the length of stand. So I think, yeah, you sometime Less is better than uh, more, yeah. yeah but do, do Patrick, uh, the, the difference uh, the, in, in the Excel paper, we have already the difference between US centers, yeah. European centers, and non others, other centers. I, I, I wonder who are these other centers? Because they are doing better than surgeons, while uh, in the US, surgery is better, and in Europe, we have equipoise. Yeah, I think that's what you describe is more or less uh, correct. I mean, being a, a chairman with, uh, with uh, Greg, I mean, at some point we had to stop South America. I mean, in South America, there was a very high uh, uh, mortality in surgery, and we stopped the trial for some time and said we need better surgeon. Uh, vice versa, I think that uh, the surgeon in the United States are somewhat superior sometimes to the European surgeon. I think that the people doing PCI in the United States are very heterogeneous, but that's also the case uh, uh, in Europe. And then uh, in Europe, we have a, a quite good balance. We should not go too far to the eastern country. Yeah, I'm talking beyond, uh, I'm not taking the Polish friend uh, in this uh, group, but then when you go further than then, you can have uh, trouble, uh, Russian people, uh, etc. cetera, yeah. Yeah, uh, can I, uh, now we have the guidelines of Rikvas Khadija in 2018, and these are very important data. Shall we wait another three years until this would affect the guidelines? These are very important for practice of everyone. So what do you think? How can we match between the guidelines and the you know, the, science. The, the guideline, I'm going to say something which is not politically correct, but okay. 
Uh, the guideline is a group of individuals which almost select themselves. And if you are not there and be very vocal, they can go in a direction that you don't like. I was in the guideline uh, at the time of the syntax. I mean, uh, for some time, syntax 22 were uh, there. They have not yet understood uh, what is the syntax 2. If you look in the guideline, there is two lines saying the syntax 2 is not accurate. But at that time, Excel was not even presented. That has not yet reached its four years mortality. So it was already buried. But I really believe, and we can improve, of course. I'm not uh, uh, crazy about syntax. Syntax has to disappear and be improved. But I really believe that uh, more and more you will have that kind of uh, precision medicine which uh, uh, force you to discuss with the surgeon on the certain numbers and discuss with the patient because the patient will go to, at a certain point to uh, internet and, and even calculate their own syntax score too. So I mean, in another time we will talk about what is uh, machine learning is doing on syntax. I'm working very hard. I hate the syntax score. I hate to calculate these things. But when the machine do for me, and it's machine called artificial intelligence, I like it. Thank you very much. I think this was actually an excellent end comment to this session. Thank you very much. So now, now we close the left main last session and give the word to uh, the president to conclude the uh, meeting. Thank you very much, Goran. Uh, thank, you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's really great finish for another meeting. Thank you very much to Professor Serois. Each time I learn so much and I feel so privileged to be here and to listen to you and to all of you, of course. Uh, if you see the photo that we made today, uh, we keep the group pretty large. Uh, we have a really uh, like a family, very good relationship between ourselves and each year uh, we meet for two days and we really discuss and it's unique to have at the end of two days of hard work uh, almost everybody in the room. I really thank you for that support that gives us strength to continue. So compared to the last year, we are almost the same, although something happened in Barcelona which prevented more than 30 people to come. So uh, we are in the range of 250, and we try to stay in that range unless uh, you suggest different. But you see, what we are trying, we are trying to be inclusive. And we invite people all over the world and you see 80 people from Asia attend this year European Bifurcation Club. I think it's very important to listen to everyone and to learn from everyone. And I will say at the end, but we really would like to have your feedback on how to proceed and what to improve. Uh, this is already very good, but I think we should go and uh, listen more to your needs and then make the program earlier than this year. So 44 countries, 183 delegates. And what we are especially proud, we have representatives from almost all European, European Bifurcation Club invites all other bifurcation clubs all over the world. So if someone is not listed here, please tell us and we will send invitation for the next year. But you see uh, China, Tunisian, Bulgarian, Asian, Japanese, uh, Indian Bifurcation Club, Korean, of course, Egypt, uh, Latin America, uh, Canadian Bifurcation Club. Vlad Javik should give me his logo for the next year. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Thailand, yeah, another one we need to invite. We just learned that there is Thailand. Uh, to focus on the program, uh, in these two days we had 17 scientific sessions, three sponsor symposia, two advisory boards, and three breakthrough meetings. And I'm especially happy to introduce new board member. Tom, where are you? Welcome. So Tom Johnson. accepted our invitation to become a board member. Uh, people commented that we need young blood and we need somebody to, to give us a little bit uh, 
of new energy and uh, Tom, we count a lot on you. And I know it's also a surprise for you, but we really thought for a long time all that you did in the field of imaging, I think it's impressive for such a young guy. Your comments, presentations are fantastic. So I, I'm really pleased to have you uh, in the board and to help us uh, prepare the next program for uh, 2020. Uh, special thanks, of course, to Manuel Pan and all our Spanish friends. Uh, I know everybody is a little bit unhappy that uh, we cannot go to the city center, but I'm sure next year we will, uh, we will be luckier. Uh, also, great thanks to our uh, colleagues and friends from the industry. Without them, uh, nothing will be possible. So, of course, uh, to all gold sponsors, especially Abbott, Boston, Metronic, Terumo, Bolton, Cordis, Shockwave, but also Biotronic, Philips, everybody contributed as much as possible. So everything that is made is really made uh, thanks to your enthusiasm, but also support of industry partners. Special thanks to Ben, Ben, <laughs> Alex, Ben, Aileen, Ben, I really apologize in front of everyone for 100 uh, requests that we had in the last two weeks. And I thank you so much for understanding the importance of cooperative work. But it was almost impossible to do it without you, without Alex and Aileen. And, and we really count on your continued support in the future as well. Uh, one initiative that we are very proud is uh, Case Award. Uh, session. So last year we tried, this year we wanted to be better. Uh, we wanted to have it really uh, open for participation throughout the year. Uh, somehow at the end, again with the help of uh, 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 Tom Johnson, we were able to promote it also on Twitter and we received some nice cases and we received fantastic comments on the Twitter. I just sent the case uh, uh, just to try DCA and drug eluting balloon for left main. In less than 24 hours, 11,000 people saw that tweet. There is no such powerful possibility to, to, to share the, the message information. This is just information. One picture and three lines of text. So we would like also Tom is expert and I don't know if Mirwat is here uh, we really need people who are skilled to use tweet and teach us how to use it as well and then share the message. Uh, for the first time in this year, we have uh, also live transmission uh, from the meeting. And just to show you, uh, our good friend Olivier Darmon couldn't come this year, but you see what he says. I follow you on my iPhone from the cat lab. So, we are really moving in very positive direction to uh, come closer to people who are unable to attend the meeting. And we updated also our uh, website. So now it's uh, uh, bifurc.eu. And we have Twitter account. Our handle is at Bifurcation Club. So whenever you comment something, please uh, think of us. And then I think we will be even bigger family. Uh, important uh, future project, ongoing and future, one that we are especially proud of, and it's actually project led by Professor Serouis and uh, uh, Yves Luvar. It's Beef Arc, Bifurcation Academic Research Consortium, cooperative project. We are uh, in the phase that we are preparing draft of the document. Of course, uh, it's a long process, and uh, with such a good leaders, I'm sure we will succeed and for the next year present, if not earlier, at the time of, of the EBC. Uh, then consensus update from this meeting will be prepared uh, by Francesco Burzotta on behalf of the EBC committee. And I would like also to invite you, we didn't have it in the lectures, but you remember from the last year initiative of Marco Zimarino, he is doing great work, and we have web-based registry on left main from the Euro Bifurcation Club, and he put really nice name, we remain no. EBC. So it's very nice. It's wrong, the email. Sorry. Okay. 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 I, I took it from you. Oh, so. <laughs> and you see the list of uh, friends already participating 
whoever wants to insert data and then uh, share the, the results, uh, please send email to Marco. Marco is big boss for the web base. He will uh, help you with uh, inclusion. And another invitation from Yanis Chatsizisis. Uh, we spoke about uh, big data and we really, uh, thanks to his project that he has in US and good connection with uh, Sky, we would like to make a joint project and put more data on the uh, cloud. And uh, for all the details, just not to take too much of your time, uh, this evening, please grab uh, Ioannis Chatsizisis and ask him how to participate. It will be lovely if we can contribute with uh, DICOM images uh, from Angie all over the world again. So uh, please send, uh, if possible, I ask every year, but not many people respond, what went well this year, uh, what we should probably change and improve, and give us suggestions for topics and sessions you would like to see in 2020. Uh, here are the emails, uh, Eve, uh, Thierry, Jens, and myself. Uh, if, if you have any idea, please share as soon as possible and we'll try to work on that one. And for EBC case award, we have Olivier and Remo Albiero coordinating that effort. And throughout the year, you will be able, and please uh, share this message with all your colleagues, you will be able to upload uh, files with your presentations directly at our website, and then committee will review the only certain way to be part of the EBC program 2020 is to have at least one case accepted, and I think it's very important to uh, do it throughout the year and not in the last uh, two weeks like, like uh, every year so far. So bus, which is pick up for dinner, is 7.45 in the lobby, and I hope uh, you will all enjoy uh, gala dinner tonight. It's a very good place. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> Alexander and Ben said it's perfect. So thank you very much for everything.